A powerful atmospheric river is locked on the west coast, aimed squarely at Northern California, Oregon, and Washington. It's a concentrated corridor of Pacific moisture stretching thousands of miles across the ocean, now positioned to deliver two major impacts in less than a week. The first surge arrives late Tuesday into Wednesday, October 21st through 22nd, targeting the Oregon and Washington coasts before pushing inland toward the Cascades. The second, stronger wave follows between October 24th and 26th, extending the threat south into Northern California and the Northern Sierra Nevada. This setup carries a high potential for heavy coastal rain, rapid river rises, strong winds, and accumulating mountain snow. Forecast guidance shows integrated vapor transport values exceeding 600 kilograms per meter per second with the first system, a strong reading on the atmospheric river scale. Rainfall totals for coastal Oregon and Washington are expected to reach one to four inches, with heavier pockets across the Olympic Peninsula and Northern Cascades. As colder air filters in behind the front, snow will develop above 8,000 feet and expand across high mountain passes by Thursday morning. The second wave forming in the Pacific is projected to be larger, wetter, and longer lasting. The Climate Prediction Center flags a high risk of heavy precipitation across Northern California and Southern Oregon, along with high elevation snow through the Northern Sierra and Southern Cascades. By October 26th, the event spreads inland toward Idaho and Western Montana. Flooding, slope failures, and travel shutdowns remain likely once the second system makes landfall. Together, these back-to-back -back atmospheric rivers mark one of the most active late October patterns of the season a direct Pacific feed bringing continuous moisture from ocean to crest across the entire Pacific Northwest Corridor. An atmospheric river isn't a typical storm. It has no eye, no rotation, no assigned name. It's not a cyclone, it's a stream. A conveyor belt of moisture drawn from the tropics and carried through the atmosphere by strong winds aloft. Picture a river flowing across the sky. The core of that current sits a few miles above the surface, narrow compared with a storm front, but loaded with vapor. When it meets the coastal mountains, the air is forced upward. Cooling triggers condensation, and that vapor turns into sheets of rain or heavy snow depending on altitude. These rivers are measured by how much water vapor they carry, the Integrated Vapor Transport, or IVT. Values above 500 kilograms per meter per second are significant. Above 700 are strong enough to cause flooding. The incoming systems fit squarely in that range. Unlike hurricanes, which organize around a low pressure core, atmospheric rivers can attach themselves to larger weather patterns. The jet stream acts as the steering current, guiding one plume after another toward the coast. When that jet stays locked in place, multiple rivers can hit the same region in quick succession, compounding the impact, just as this late October pattern is doing now. They're both a hazard and a necessity. Without them, the western United States would face severe water shortages. Roughly half of the region's annual rainfall and nearly all its snowpack come from a handful of strong atmospheric river events each winter. The same systems that refill reservoirs can also unleash damaging floods when they arrive too quickly. Scientists classify them on a scale from AR1 to AR5 based on intensity and duration. Lower categories bring helpful rain. Higher ones cause destructive flooding. The current pair ranks around AR3 to AR4, strong to extreme because of their moisture load and short spacing. Hurricanes spin, atmospheric rivers flow. One rips in circles, the other pours in lines. Both draw their power from heat and moisture, but the river moves quietly until it strikes terrain, then releases everything at once. By the final week of October, the Pacific Corridor will likely remain active, sending more plumes toward the coast. Each one carries the same potential, to replenish, to erode, to test every slope and channel along the western edge of the continent. That's what's coming, and that's what an atmosphere